Sandra on a 2019 film called Sybil. What was the spark of inspiration for, for this script? Was this something that you wanted to do a starring role for Sandra or, you know, Sybil is also about a, a woman who's a writer and pulling from her own life. Um, what was the inspiration for Anatomy of a Fall? Je pense que l'inspiration pour moi c'était réellement de, de plonger dans, dans l'histoire de ce couple, de raconter un couple quand même euh, très, euh, voilà, dans une histoire très, qui finit mal, et, et de passer par le biais de, du judiciaire. Donc, vraiment l'idée était partir de là. Je crois que hein, là aussi l'autre idée qui était vraiment centrale, c'était de donner un, un tandem comme ça d'une mère avec son fils, et que son fils soit central dans l'histoire du, du procès, et que le fils réceptionne tout ça, et d'avoir vraiment cette idée de montrer la fragilité d'un enfant qui se met à douter de sa mère aussi. Mm -hmm. The first um, inspiration was to, the first desire was to dive into this uh, relationship and into this couple um, and see this relationship that ends badly through the prism of the judiciary system. And the second um, important thread was to unfold the relationship between the mom and the son and for the son to be such a central part of an intrigue and, and to, to talk about the dissolution of trust between them. And Sandra, your uh, character is quite mysterious, mercurial at times, ambiguous. When you got this script from Justine and Arthur, um, what was your entry point into this character? How did you kind of think about how she would be presenting so many different faces to so many different people, like in the courtroom, in the family life, even to the audience? Like, how did you kind of manage all of those different layers? Well, first of all, I think that we all do that. We all act according to, well, some people don't, but most people I know do that. They kind of act according to the person that they're talking to. I'm a different person when I'm talking to my family than when I'm talking to you right now, especially with yeah, the language. Yeah. And, <laughs> yeah, so it's it's like a, I don't believe in that, in that people are always the same. I don't know anybody who, who is that way. So that was very easy, but I don't necessarily think so much about an entry point or something. I was also driven by the question if it was possible that she would have done such a cool thing. Um, and I wanted to find out how this thing, I was just curious about how this would work. That was the, that was the thing. I, I love that we don't know, you know, if she did it or not, or if she was involved. Um, and that it's about emotional truth rather than facts, and it's about the emotional truth between um, this character and her uh, son. I mean, I'm curious of the audience, like, do you think she did something? Like, raise your hand. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> one person in the end. In the back, is um, uh, in, in terms of the writing, um, it is such a procedural courtroom drama. Were there any films that you took inspiration from or uh, things you read or materials that you used for research to write such a hefty piece of, you know, procedure? Um, oui, il y en a eu plein, en fait. Je pense que... Alors, déjà, on était conseillé par un avocat euh, qui nous a suivi tout, pendant toute l'écriture, un pénaliste qui a été vraiment très très précieux pour nous et qui nous a appris comment ça se passait. Et puis après, je pense que c'est très difficile de trouver une influence parce que moi, je regarde beaucoup de choses extrêmement... Euh, euh, des, des, des super films très beaux, de grands cinéastes, mais aussi des choses très... Enfin, je, je me souviens avoir aussi euh, été sur Google, euh, chercher des choses sur des procès, en fait, filmés en France ou ailleurs. Donc, En fait, toutes sortes de choses m'ont inspiré en fait, de ma façon. Ce n'était pas une seule chose. Euh, je pense qu'effectivement, un film qui résonne encore plus maintenant, c'est La vérité de Clouseau, qui est vraiment, à mon avis, un... il y a beaucoup de choses qui résonnent en fait avec euh, le personnage de Sandra chez Brigitte Bardot dans son rôle, même s'ils sont très très différents. Euh... Ah, c'est déjà pas mal. As we had um, her research and her counsel, we were um, in, in touch with a legal counselor and a lawyer who, who gave us a lot of guidance as to, as to how things um, unfold in that world. And other than that, it's difficult to pinpoint one influence because there were so many and so varied. I both ate up so many masterpieces of cinema that treated um, um, these questions as much as 
I just got into the straight on Google, watching YouTube um, or, or available content online. So, so, so really, the scope of, of things that he drew inspiration on is is quite wide, and and then. Um, to speak of one cinematic influence is, is difficult, but the thing that maybe resonates more and more now is uh, Kuzo's The Truth, Wednesday, where I think that Rishi Bravo's character, despite all her differences, has a lot of resonance in these sandras. I think it's really significant that um, Sandra is an outsider in this uh, community. Uh, you know, she doesn't speak French. Um, she's, you know, that's his hometown. It's not where she's from. Can you talk a little bit about that, how that affected your approach to the character and then also, you know, why you thought it was significant that she was not a French woman in this world? Um, uh, I think that the experience of being judged is something that she's very familiar with. So, uh, and for a long time, if it was in Germany or in this relationship or uh, with the, the friends of her husband or the people in the village or whatever. And I guess she, at one point she decided to just not care about it. Anymore. She's just doing her work and raising her son. And, um, so, as I said, it's something that she's familiar with, so it's also something that she can deal with in the trial. She, I think that in some of the preparation that uh, her lawyer uh, did for her and with her made her aware of the fact that there would be very rude situations that she would have to, to deal with. Yeah. Oui, je pense que, en fait, c est, c est, ça a été vraiment central aussi parce que j'ai pensé à, à Sandra et que je voulais surtout pas gommer cette chose-là. Sandra, effectivement, dans cette histoire en France, je voulais absolument pas faire semblant qu'elle soit pas évidemment euh, étrangère. Après, je pense qu'il y a vraiment la question, et ça, je trouve ça passionnant en fait, c'est l'idée de du langage en fait. Ça amène forcément à l'idée du langage et le langage est central dans le film. Et c'est une chose que je trouve euh, intéressante, comme en fait. Euh, c'est quelqu'un qui, de toute façon, de par tout ce qu'elle est dans le film, c'est-à-dire par tous les endroits où elle est, où elle est, euh, comment dire, euh, où elle a l'air d'être costaud, d'être plutôt plus forte que les autres, que ça va être forcément se jouer contre elle au moment du procès. Et je pense que le fait qu'elle soit euh, étrangère, de toute façon, aussi joue contre elle, parce qu'on sent que c'est quand même une actrice plusieurs langues, que quelque part, euh, ces, ces langues-là sont quand même une espèce de masque, en fait, entre elle et la réalité. Et, euh, et, je sens, et on sent effectivement qu'elle qu est en permanence jugée, qu'elle est en permanence analysée, etc. Et que c'est une, une autre forme encore d'aspect de, 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 qui permet encore, encore plus de jouer dans ce sens-là. Je sais pas si c'est bon. Je vais rajouter quelque chose. Je vais So um, it was very central from the start because I wrote with Sandra in mind and I didn't want to erase the fact of her not being French and that this was something I was going to have to play um, into it as well. And then it's that that's what allows for the dimension of the question of language to arise um, in this way because um, in some ways, more largely, all of the places that Sandra's character has um, a territory of her own power, of strength, um, all of these things are what are going to be turned up against her in the trial. And in some way, the fact that she's an outsider also is something that she's being put on trial for because there is this assumption that all of the sort of language barriers or distances become like masks um, that she is then scrutinized and, and analyzed and judged for as well. So one, I have a, a very burning question about this movie, which is that I need to know why the song um, <laughs> the jazzy steel pan version of 50 Cent's P.I.O.P. was the song that was playing over and over again. <laughs> and, and that's for anyone, you know, Justine or Arthur, whoever it was inspired by that, that particular rendition. You, you knew in, I have a question for the audience, you knew that version before or not? Yeah. I did not know that version so before. Famous, yeah. I know the original song. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but it was too expensive for us, you know. Maybe too expensive. Um, yes, actually, I thought it was too expensive, even the, that the, that version. But it was very funny because we just sold it 
to the Stephen, oh. and it was, I don't know exactly the, 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 the deal, but it was very uh, cheap. cheap. cheap for <laughs> <laughs> so we, we are very, very, uh, yes. Uh, but <laughs> so you got a deal. <laughs> At the beginning, it was uh, joined by Dolita Fortel. Oh, oh, wow. And, uh, and I was very furious because just, I think, one month before the, the shooting, they said, they said me, okay, it's not a question of, of money. They don't, they don't want to. They didn't say why. Yeah. So I was, why? <laughs> and they didn't say anything. So I said, okay, I have to put the switch. In. And my second card was, uh, <laughs> was 50 cents. <laughs> 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 and after, we, uh, there was, there was a many, many sentence in the, in the courtroom around, um, Around the, the around the lyrics of uh, Jolene, so I had to imagine something, but it was very different with Fifty Cent because there is no lyrics in that version. So we managed something, but yes, uh, we have just one thing for Fifty Cent in the contract. It was very important that the the music was not in the gun scene, you know. Oh. So I was okay. It was <laughs> Because if it was with a gun scene, they said no. We don't want to sell it. So the guy dies, but it's no gun. It's not gun. Wait, 50 cents of that? Yes, it was in the contract with 50 cents. Okay, I just want to say, I saw the fourth Expendables movie, and that song is in that movie. And there's a lot of shooting in that movie. <laughs> He's also, 50 Cent is also in that movie. <laughs> Wow, we're going to get to the bottom of this. I'm really concerned now. Um, so, had you heard, you knew that song, or you were familiar with it, or you just were like, this would No, be yes, it was in my, uh, you know, in my playlist in YouTube uh, during, I think, uh, four years, and it, it, I, I heard it, I think, uh, uh, 5,000 times. Times. So I thought okay, maybe it's okay to put it again and again in the movie because uh, we can, uh, it resists. Okay. And with time, you know, stand <laughs> um, Yes, and I think, no, more seriously, I think the, 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 you know, we were obsessed by, okay, she discovered the body in the snow, and um, we have to find something who could be not too heavy, like, uh, you know, like uh, classical music could be very beautiful, but too heavy. And I think the contrast with the music very, uh, very fun, not funny, but you know, uh, a little, uh, and not too high. I was, it was perfect for me. It's kind of like an absurdist moment, and it's sort of how life can be quite absurd, absurdist in that way, where you're like, I can't believe this song is playing right now. <laughs> um, I think it's perfect, so. You know. No, I, I would love to have the, at the credits at the, at the end, the, the original version for 50 cents, but it was not possible. <laughs> we're going Sly. Sly. We're getting Sly Stallone on the phone, because he, <laughs> yeah. um, well, I hope you can perform it at the Oscars for you guys. Did <laughs> <laughs> you perform with him? <laughs> never say never. Never say never. Oh gosh, okay. We've gotten this a little, I've gotten us into a silly place, but um, this is a very serious movie. But um, I'm curious, Sandra, if there were any scenes that were particularly challenging to film or if it was just, you know, a very, you know, easy collaboration with, with uh, this person, this, these filmmakers you've worked with before? Um, like the, no, no particular, there was no scene that I was particularly afraid of. Of course, the, the courtroom scenes, there, I shouldn't make a mistake there. Right. So there was a, a, a bit more tension there than in the house. Um, also because of the language and because, of course, I had to understand my colleagues, my beautiful, wonderful um, fellow actors. They all speak French there, so I had to learn that. And so all these things, nothing should go wrong at that moment. Um, but the way we work together is very light and comfortable and it's safe. And there is a lot of discussion going on all the time. And it's really close, so it was a pleasure. I mean, the, the guy who plays the prosecutor is quite dogged. <laughs> He's intense. Can you talk a little bit about casting him or, or working with him on his performance? Yes, I don't understand. 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 Yes, I don't
Um, yes, first of all, I, I, I wanted somebody unknown, totally, and, um, and I asked many, many people, and I, the, at the end, he comes, he came, and uh, yes, I think she, he was so, <laughs> so, so funny, you know, in the same time, he's, he's uh, like uh, very, very uh, aggressive, but very with a soft way of doing the aggressive uh, things. Uh, yes, I think he's really modern in his way of, of playing. And we, you know, in France, we, we have many, many people who play that kind of, of part that they are old and very, uh, you know, with very big voice like this. And, and I think he, he brings something very fresh and very, very uh, aggressive that I like very much. <laughs>